Well, if we take take, then bishop g6 wins the rook. If bishop h3, king h3, rook e8 takes, maybe it's king g7. And if you take, then we take the knight. Okay, I'm sure this is the idea. Nice! Nice! Let's go! In today's video, we're going to be doing a puzzle rush survival on chess.com with no time limit. So I'm going to be able to talk you through my thought process while we do this. And I'd like to get to at least 40. I think that's very achievable. In the last one, that was definitely something that I could have done. If I took a little bit more time on a couple of the puzzles, um, one of them I literally misclicked. That was very frustrating. That video will be linked below if you want to check that out. I have already actually done the first puzzle on this accidentally. It was just a back rank mate because, I mean, this one is also just a back rank mate. <laughs> but yeah, let's get into it. We're not going to think too hard about the back rankers. This one, you know, obviously it looks very scary. Black is threatening all kinds of things. But um, this is just a simple ladder. Um, this is kind of the case with a lot of the early ones. You know, this is just another back rank because the king runs out of squares. Uh, this one we just promote, and obviously you have to promote to a queen because you also have to control the g2 square, but again, this is just kind of a normal back rank mate. Um, this one, okay, think a little bit harder. That rook on a7, by the way, is hilarious. But um, yeah, queen c7 check, king b8, and queen d8, queen c8, and queen c8 should be winning. There we go. Okay, this one... Um, I mean, like, the first thing that I notice in this position is the fact that my knight is on the g4 square. And, of course, that means that we're targeting h2. And wouldn't you know it, the queen is also targeting h2. Okay, here. I mean, wow, that's a really weird position. I don't know whether these positions come from, like, actual games or not. Because if they do... <laughs> what happened here that is hilarious but um yeah of course the only thing black has going for him is the double um like battery on the d file and the knight just relieved its defense of the t d2 square which is of course mate okay bishop takes d6 of course first thing you think is oh king takes d6 we just take back but again knight on g4 what is the knight on g4 target f2 what also targets f2 the queen so, of course, this is checkmate. Okay, rolling through these. Um, first thing I notice is F3. The fact that F3 is quite weak. Uh, the material balance is also looks pretty even. Um, yeah, same amount of pawns, same amount of pieces. So, I assume we want to take on F3. Of course, Queen F3 gets met with Rook F3. So I assume bishop to f3 is the move. If everything gets exchanged, then we just end up an exchange up. So bishop takes f3, rook g2, take, take, and then we take on f1, which would be mate. So yeah, white has to exchange everything, and it's just completely winning. Uh, yeah, here, so of course you notice the rooks on the 7th rank, and the king is out of squares. Because the rook is taking up the e8 square, which means rook a to f7 is going to be mate, because this rook maintains control of the g8 square. So that is checkmate. Okay, I don't want to go too quickly and get stuff wrong, but I mean, that one was quite obvious. Um, I think 40 is quite achievable. I think we can get this. Okay, this is a bit interesting, but I think we just take the knight. I mean, you know. Normally, when you're assessing a, a puzzle, or even just any position in chess, like when you're playing a normal game, you look for checks, captures, and attacks. Knight f3 and knight d3 are both checks. Um, knight f3 obviously doesn't just sack a knight for no reason, <laughs> like knight d3 does. You also, again, the knight on g4, common theme, um, attacking the f2 square. My initial thought was, can I, for this, can I force this knight to move so I can play this? No, I can't. But I can take, and because the material balance is even, white needs to take back, and then queen f3, we attack the rook and we attack f2. White cannot defend both the rook and the f2 square. If rook g2, then queen f2, king d1, and we should just be able to take on g1. So this should be completely winning. Okay, yeah, he defends f2, but we just take the rook. All right. 
First thing you notice, the fact that we're attacking b7 one, two, three times. And the most forcing, like the move that you initially think is bishop b7, because you think, okay, bishop b7, bishop b7, queen b7, right? But if we play bishop b7, black doesn't have to take me. He could do something else. I don't know, maybe queen to b6, which might save him because we are down material. So rook b7, however, forces black to take because we also control the c7 square and then we can take with the queen, meaning that black does not have time to put his queen on b6 to block the file. Okay, this is interesting. I assume rook b7 because black can't defend the g7 square. Sorry about that. The uh, door just went. Anyway, uh, oh, okay. I think rook b7 should be winning because we're obviously threatening rook g7, king h8, rook h8, sorry, rook h7, king g8, and rook g7 mate. But if we do something like rook b7, he can't challenge us off in the seventh rank. So if he tries to give his king room with a move like rook b8, then I assume we just take and then we either set up a mate or we push our h pawn. Okay, he just gives up the rook, so um, <laughs> that's quite easy. There we go. Um, okay, here, this is a cool one. Obviously, you don't want to take and just trade all the rooks. Instead, rook h7, you notice the alignment of the bishop and the rook, and obviously the king can't escape, so that's checkmate. Black to move. All right, so obviously black needs to do something immediately, or it's game over. And what do you look for? Checks, captures, and attacks. Checks first. So, you know, queen b3, queen f3, and queen to b1. Queen b1 is, of course, the move because this king cuts, like, the king cuts him off on the left, the queen cuts him off on the right, and the rook cuts him off from d2. So that's mate. Okay, so g6, again, checks, captures, attacks. We only have one, well, we do have queen to a4, I suppose. But the only useful check I see is bishop to g6. And it's very easy because the calculation is simple because he only has one move. And then we deliver mate on f7. Whoops, there we go. Okay, rolling through them. <laughs> this is a nice one. So knight d6 is, of course, the move to smothered mate the king. And the re like you can spot this quite quickly because... The only pieces for white that are doing anything are the queen and the knight. And the queen obviously can't do anything to the king because, of course, you're first looking for checks uh, because the king is completely covered. So the queen can't do anything, but knights jump over pieces. Knight c7 obviously doesn't work, so knight d6 is the logical continuation in your mind, and that delivers smothered mate. Okay. Rook g2. Rook g2. So... First move I'm looking at is knight to f6. He just goes king e7. So I'm still looking for checks. Rook f8 doesn't do anything. And then bishop to f7 attacks the king. King can't go to e7 because the knight controls that square. And that delivers mate. And the actual like thought process in my mind, first was rook f8. Second was knight f6. And third was bishop to f7. They're all checking moves, right? It's not like I'm immediately going to see the correct one, but you just have to look at all of them. You discard the ones that don't work, and then you see bishop f7, and you go, oh, that one works. So we, of course, do that. Okay, bishop to d4. Ah, this is a cool one. So you can actually solve this by understanding the point of bishop to d4. So if we take it and move back, why does white play bishop d4? Well, okay, what would we do if it was black's turn on this move? Well, if it was black's turn, if my game doesn't keep lagging, then we would play rook to d3 check. Okay, I'm going to pause it while I refresh my page real quick. Okay, there we go. Apologies. So the reason white plays bishop to d4 is to stop rook d3 check picking up the rook. Okay. Obviously, taking does nothing, but we can play the move c5 to attack the bishop, force the bishop off of the d4 square. If the bishop takes, then rook d3, and we win the rook. So c5 is the correct move, because it is essentially, um, what was it called? 
a deflection tactic, right? We're deflecting the bishop away from blocking the file. Okay, interesting position. This one isn't so obvious because we're not threatening mate or anything, but if you take a look at the material count, we have three minor pieces. Black has two minor pieces. We both have two rooks and both have a queen. So we're up a minor piece. And we need to try and defend ourselves. B3 is the first move that comes to mind. Because we just attack the queen and block the check. And we're then threatening to take the bishop. The queen can't defend the bishop. So we would just pick it up. Okay. Bishop to E4. I assume we just go king to B2. And the same threat remains. A takes on C1. But it doesn't matter because... Um, we're still up a piece, so does it matter if we go queen c1 or king c1? Well, if king c1, then queen a3, queen sorry, king d2, that's kind of scary, so queen c1 is the move. All right, starting to get a little bit trickier, except here, I think we just go queen f2, king h1, and queen to g2 mate, so that is um quite easy. Although, this is a ridiculous position because. <laughs> Why is white not just taking or playing queen f7 or just doing anything other than playing rook d1? I swear these positions come from actual games like played on chess.com. So that's pretty hilarious. But yeah, queen f2 and queen g2 is mate. All right. c6, what does that do? Um, well, it allows us just to deliver mate on a8. I would have thought a 1,200-odd puzzle would be a little bit harder than that, but apparently not. Okay, king to d1. So first of all, I'm looking at bishop c2, because it's a check, and it's the only useful check we have. And the king either goes to e2, or he takes, and in either case we promote, because the knights are still on their home squares, meaning the rooks don't help in the defense of the d1 square. So that's mate. Lovely stuff. Okay, here, this is easy. We just take on g7 because c6 opens up this rook to the attack. You do have to be careful you don't take with the wrong rook, though, because if you take with the, um, the b rook, then king to h8 and we have no attack. Whereas if you take with this rook, king h8, rook h7, king g8, and rook to g7 mate. Similar to the... Um, puzzle we saw before except this is actually a forced mate okay here this is a, a, a classic this is an absolute classic um you all should know this pattern the queen's lined up with the king the knight is on f7 so of course knight to h6 is a double check the king goes to h8 because when there's a double check you have to move the king and we then follow up with queen to g8 check because it is smothered mate. Beautiful stuff. This is interesting. The first move that comes to mind is knight e4 because we attack the queen and we prepare the move queen to h4 to try and deliver some kind of mate. We also don't really have any other active pieces. This knight can't go anywhere. Um, the bishops are locked in, the rooks aren't doing anything, so knight e4 looks good. If something like knight e4, queen c2, queen h4, g3, then we have knight g3, because if hg3, then we have queen 2, h1, so I assume this is winning. Yeah, and if we go queen h4 and he goes king to d1, then we can go knight to f2 and pick up the queen. So I'm just checking there's not anything else but I'm pretty sure this is the correct continuation. It's something like queen h4, king e2. Queen f2, king d1, white is okay. But if queen h4, king to e2, I think we probably play knight g3 check. Forking the king and the rook, and if he takes, then we take. And the material other than that is equal, so this should be winning. And yeah, we take with the knight, and then we pick up the rook, and it's winning for the black pieces. This is the first move I see here. Um, I'm just trying to be as authentic as possible. This is 
the move that I see because the king is fully surrounded except for this diagonal and the bishop is also weak but it doesn't actually matter that the bishop is weak because it's simply mate the king is surrounded by his own pieces and he has no way out okay here we have two queens on the board I don't know how that's happened how, how on earth has that happened whatever <laughs> that's quite funny um all right so 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 first move i see is knight to g5 check knight g5 the king only has the g8 square we can't deliver mate on h7 because the knight controls that square Ooh. oh but i think yeah, I think this works. I think knight g5, he has to go king g8, which makes calculation simple. Then I think we have queen takes e8, knight takes e8, queen h7, king f8, and queen to f7 mate. Nice. Yep, beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. That, that, that was quite pretty. That was quite pretty. And of course, you, I'm just looking for the forcing moves. Queen takes e8 was the most forcing move, and it also, you know, exposes the overloaded nature of the knight. King f3 is wild. Um, okay. So the first move I'm looking at is rook to d3, but he has too much defense on that square. This rook can't do anything. The second move I see is queen to f4 check, which is easy to calculate because the king only has one square, which is e2. We can then deliver a check on d2 with the rook. The king only has two squares. In either square, we play queen to f2 checkmate. So that is nice and forcing and therefore simple because it makes calculation easier because we only have to look at one move for the white pieces in that position because the king only had one or two squares to go to and the outcome was the same regardless. Okay, 40 should be incredibly achievable at this point because I don't think I've really struggled with any of them yet. Um, this is interesting. So we're down a lot of material here. Um, the first move I'm looking at is rook to e1, rook e1, rook e1, king g2, and then we have knight to f4 with a beautiful fort. We'll pick up the queen and we'll beat up a knight. Okay, he does it this way around. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, just checking that rook g8 isn't any good, but the queen controls that square, so we'll deliver this check and pick up the queen and end off up a knight. Okay, first move I see is knight c3. Again, I'm tr I'm trying to say that quickly because that is literally the first move I see. But we're down so much material already. We're down what um a knight and a rook that the king can escape, and uh, even though we pick up this bishop. It doesn't matter. Although we don't even pick up the bishop because the rook controls that square. So we just lose everything. Second move I see is bishop to c2 check, which I believe delivers checkmate because the knight and the bishop work together to cut the king's escapes off as well as my own king. And he can't block that. Very pretty. Okay. Queen versus queen. White is nearly promoting. So the first thing I'm noticing is the alignment of the king and the queen on this diagonal. If I can somehow make it so that I can get to a square like f3, then I can pick up the queen. Not sure I can do that, though. Um, queen to e5 and queen to c5 are the first moves that come to my mind. We'll check queen e5 first. So queen e5, king c4 is the only move. Uh, you know, queen to c5 and the king just escapes. And he's just going to hide amongst his pawns. So, okay, queen to c5, queen c5, king e4, I don't know what we're doing there, f5 would be a nice move because c, queen c5 mate would be threatened, but our king is way too vulnerable, so that doesn't seem to work, what about, oh, queen d3 is just mate. It's so counterintuitive as well. The point is the poor... Well, it actually isn't, mate. No, no, no. It, it's a link of both ideas. It's a link of both ideas. 
Queen d3, the only square for the king is c6, and then we deliver a check on e4. And like I was saying, the alignment of the king and the queen, we pick up the queen. There we go. That's very nice. Very nice. And um, yeah, queen to d3 just seems kind of counterintuitive because queen e5 and queen c5 are the moves that you want to play because your queen is right next to the king and therefore it's normally more threatening. But yeah, very nice. Okay. First move I see is knight to g6, um, just because the bishop controls um, the g8 square and therefore black is very vulnerable. But we already have a rook on the h file, so the pawn can't even take and it's just mate in one. Crazy that that's an 1800 puzzle. This is cool. I'm first looking for checks. Um, well, this is a check, but white just takes. This is also a check, and white is, of course, forced to take. We can then play f5, king to. Um, F3 takes and takes. I think that's a winning end game. Because, yeah, our king gets in in time. And I believe this should win. And then king to h4. And then king to g4. And black obtains the opposition. And importantly, it is not a flank pawn. If it was a flank pawn... I'm pretty sure it's a draw, but because it's not a flank pawn, I think that's winning. Well, it must be. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been a puzzle. Okay, queen h5 is the first move that I see, because it's just a check, and these checks don't do anything. So, queen h5 check. Black's only move is g6, because we're covering the e7 square. So, queen h5, g6, knight takes g6 is, of course, the move that you see, because if pawn takes, then queen takes is mate. So if queen h5, g6, knight takes g6, black has to give his king an escape square, and then we can just do something like taking the rook, which should be completely winning. Uh, yeah, taking here is no good, so let's just do this. That's an interesting move. That is actually an interesting move. Wow. Um, we, don't have a discover we don't have a double check, which would mean the queen can't be taken, because the knight and the king geometrically don't line up but if we take and then take and then queen to e6 black's only move is bishop to e7 um knight f6 king f8 hmm we are down a piece there, I think. Okay, what about queen g4, h g6, queen g6, king to d7, queen f7. Oh, am I missing something obvious? Queen g4. H G six. We are just down a bishop. Um Queen E six, Bishop E seven. I don't know how we control the F eight square. That's the problem. Knight F six, King F eight. Knight d7, the king just goes back to e8. So I'm not sure. Bishop g4 is a very cool move. Um, I just didn't see it, quite, quite honestly. Um, well, we have to take. Okay, apparently that's winning. I'm going to find out why. I'm going to find out why. Maybe I've missed something obvious. Okay, we have the analysis board up now. So queen h5, g6, knight g6. I mean, we're completely winning. In like every other variation. Uh, bishop to g4 is very cool. We have to take. So I mean you could just play like queen h4 to stay on the h file I suppose. But yeah the knight hangs at the end of it so that's no good. So of course we take the bishop. hg6. If queen e6, bishop e7, I couldn't find a good continuation after this. Knight g4 is the best move. So queen e6 check isn't the move. It's queen g6. And after king d8, 
sorry, d7. Ah, queen f5 check is the move. So, ah, okay, you cut the king off from going back, and after king e8, then we can take on f6, king to e7, and then bc6, and apparently white is just winning. bc6, rook c1. Okay, I mean, I guess material is... Oh, material's equal. Oh, I think I just missed the fact that material was equal. Um, I don't know why. But okay, that makes sense, because white has way too much pressure, and he's just up two pawns. Yeah, he's just up two pawns. So, okay, that makes sense. Let's get back to the puzzle rush. Alright, alright, so, number, what is this, 37? No incorrect moves as of yet. Okay, so, bishop a3 is a check. I was first trying to look at moves like knight to d5, but of course that just doesn't work. Bishop a3, black can only block with the knight, and then we just take, and he's just mated. I mean, c5, we just take again, right? Uh, Yeah, it's just mate. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, first move I see is rook to h1. The king only has the g4 square, because we control g3 with the queen. Um... I suppose we could take on h5, but I feel like that's not the right continuation. There must be something better. Um, rook h1, king g4. I don't know if we can check him. We It might just be rook to h5, because white has no threats. We control e7, we control e5, and the white king is out in the open. And the rook's also under attack. Ah, yeah. Rook h1, king g4, rook h5. How does the queen maintain defense of the rook? That has to be the idea. Of course, we can't take like this because this is a pin. But rook h5, where does the queen go? Because we have no other checks. Yeah, he just gives the rook up. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So that was a little bit more difficult because the solution wasn't like an obvious checkmate or obviously win winning a ton of material, until you realize, oh, the queen actually can't hold on to the rook. That was a cool puzzle. Okay, so we are down a piece. We are down a piece. If we check, king g8. If we check, king f8. That doesn't look quite right. I was thinking it might be some kind of perpetual, but the king could run to the e8 square, like something like this, 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 and then we have no checks. The bishop is also threatening to take here with check. Maybe the idea is to check like this, and if the king goes back to g8, then we keep checking, and if he goes to e8, then maybe the idea is rook to g7, threatening mate forcing the king to come back, and then continuing the checks. That might be the idea, which would be pretty cool, in fairness. The thing is, I don't actually see anything else for white. I think this must be the idea, because if we check on um, h8, he just takes the rook, and then we take, and then we're down a bishop, right? Okay. Oh, wait, what about rook g5? Because remember, we are up. We are up three pawns. Rook g5. And if takes, then we win the rook. Yes. Beautiful. So I didn't see that initially, but I thought our only moves are to give checks to the king. And then once the rook ends up on g7, then you realize. That's very cool. Very, very cool. Okay. First thing I notice, this. Second thing I notice, what about bishop h6? Um, the queen can't get involved, I don't think. If something like queen b2 to try and defend, I think rook d4 wins, <laughs> which is very, very nice. Yeah, I think it might be bishop h6, queen b2, and rook d4, because he, if you take with a pawn, then I just deliver mate. Would it be rook d4 first? No, I don't think so, because then takes and here, and then the queen can take here with check, and then maybe she can defend by going, like, queen e5. 
But if we go for this first, then taking here doesn't work because the rook controls that square. So yeah, rook d4 looks right. There we go. And the queen just sacrifices herself. We are on 40. So that is what I wanted to reach. And we haven't got any wrong yet. And of course, you need to get three wrong to lose. And we haven't got any wrong. Let's see how far we can keep this going. Is this just mating one? So of course the first move you see is a uh, knight e3, but the king can just go to like e2, and the best we can do is win an exchange, I think. So is knight h2 just mate? We control these squares, the bishop controls these squares, and the knight attacks the king. There is no way a 2156 puzzle is just a mate in one. Okay, isn't this just en passant? By the way, isn't white just... Oh, this might not be winning for white, because black maybe gets the opposition. Doesn't king h3 just win? Okay, surely this is just en passant, though. I mean, it's black's only move. Here, here. Uh... It might be promoting. King takes, king g4. The king actually can't get back yet. But I don't know what else black can even do. Maybe king h4? Because it puts white in a really tricky situation because he can't get access to the pawn. And where's his king going? Because if the king goes to f4 to keep an eye on this pawn, then we just promote. King h4. If king f2, then we take. And if he goes to a square like e1, then we go like king f3, king d2, king e4. Oh, that is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That's a nice puzzle. That's a nice puzzle. Very, very cool. Okay. Of course, we'd love to promote, but we can't because the rook is stopping us. So we need to find a way to deflect the rook. The first move I see is h5 check, simply because it's a check. If the king takes, then I think we can go rook f5 followed by rook e5. And the rook is now in a bit of a predicament. Okay, but if h5 check, the king, of course, doesn't have to take. The king could go to a square like h3. And then, I mean, the king can't really move a whole lot, but I don't know what the follow-up is. What happens if we take on h2, then a6? Uh, that doesn't really work. Okay, what about f5? f5, the king has to step onto the h file. A sticking h3. Maybe f4? And if takes, then rook f3, forcing the rook away from defending e1. f5. Well, that only works if king h3, though. Because then rook f3 comes with check. What if he goes to like h5 or h4? Well, then this is mate. Oh, no way is this the move. F4. And then rook f3. Oh my. <laughs> that is awesome. I don't know what's happening. I think I'm just on a roll right now. By the way, this isn't Corona. It's water. I don't drink. <laughs> it's just a massive glass. That is so cool. Okay, I think this... Well, the first thing I'm looking at is this typical mating pattern, right? With um, rook h2, sorry, bishop h2, king f2, bishop g3, king g1, and queen 2 h2 mate. But if we go here, here, wait, no, he can't go here. What am I on about? He has to go to h1 because our queen controls this square. And then here, and then here, and then mate. Wait, how is this a 2300 puzzle? Is it not just this? 
Okay, that last puzzle was so difficult. And then this one was just obvious. Like a really obvious mating pattern. What? Okay, first move that comes to mind is bishop to e5. Knight takes pawn takes king takes. And we're running out of pieces. Okay. What about... Uh... G5? Pawn takes... Bishop takes, king takes, rook g1. The king can just go back to f6, though. Um, oh, is it rook h5? Setting up bishop e5, knight e5, pawn e5, because the rook would defend that square. How does black stop that? Okay, rook h5, maybe e5, giving the king the e6 square. Rook h5, e5. Ah, but then we have Queen F5, mate. Oh my god, that is beautiful. Okay, but he gives himself the G7 square. So if we do this, 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 then King G7. Is the move... Well, I was thinking maybe Queen E3. But then we lose control of G6. Queen E3 with the idea of supporting this, right? Hmm. Is it rook f5? Because if pawn takes, queen takes, king g7, queen f7 is mate. Rook f5, what if he takes on g6? Then, I think the move might be rook g5 double check. Oh my god. That is awesome. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I don't know how I'm finding these. Like, I don't know, maybe some of these are more obvious than I'm making them out to be. By the way, my hair looks really weird right now. I don't know. Um, But I'm very impressed with myself. We're on 45. We haven't got a single one wrong yet. Yes, I'm aware I have no time limit. But it's not like I've been taking years on these. Okay, first move I see is bishop to h4. If the king steps to f1. Rook f5. Eh, I don't know. Okay, let's do a quick material count. Oh yeah, this is just winning, right? Because... If we take the rook, then he takes our knight, and he's got two pieces for a rook. If we go bishop to h4 check, king f1, we take here with check, and therefore we're just up a piece because we can then save the knight. Okay. Bishop to h4, king to um, d1. Then we can take on c3 with check, and then take the rook, and then we'll be up an exchange. Yeah, there we go. Because the queen defends the bishop, so his queen attacking the bishop isn't a problem. Beautiful. Okay. So he's giving us a check. We have two moves, I think. Yeah, we just have two moves. So king b7 looks like the most obvious. So we are up a piece. So I assume all we have to do is defend. Um, I don't understand. Oh, okay, our bishop's hanging. If we do this, and he takes, then we can take with the bishop. So he just goes back, and then... Okay. So we just go bishop to e8. Or do we take on h3? Then if here... Then we take his bishop. Take. That has to be the best move, right? Okay, he's setting up some things on the A file. Can we just go rook A8? Rook A8, rook A8, rook A8, rook A8, king A8. If queen B6, we take here. He has no threats. Okay, let's just think. Let's not take this just yet. Because queen G4 looks interesting. If the queen moves, then we just mate him. 
So let's say he saves the rook. Ah, but then he has rook h8. Threatening rook h7. Skewering the bishops. So yeah, we have to take. Interesting though. Okay, we're almost at 50 with none wrong. Um, oh, I was that was going to be an arrow. Um, <laughs> is c2 winning? No, because bishop c2, rook a2, rook c8 defends the bishop. Uh, we are down a piece as well. Uh, what about rook 2a2 check? Rook a2 check, let's say king g3. If c2, he just takes the bishop. That doesn't work. Um, does rook f... Sorry, bishop f5 work? No. Here, if there, 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 then he can just defend himself quite easily. This is interesting. How do we win this? Because rook a2, I don't think works. Rook a2, king g3. Bishop e6? Maybe that's the idea. But then he just takes on um, g6 and this pawn is overloaded. Rook a2, king g3. I say king g3 because it keeps the king on a dark square, which looks like the right idea. Um, so it can't get checked by the bishop, of course. Oh, what's, what's the move? What's the move? c2 doesn't work. And... H takes G6. Could be a problem. Rook A2, King G3, Bishop E6. H G6, King G7. Take. Take. Take, take. Rook C8. And we're losing. How, how do we defend? Oh, wait. Is it not just bishop h3? King h3, rook to e8. Take, take. Well, if we take, take, then bishop g6 wins the rook. If bishop h3, king h3, rook e8 takes, maybe it's king g7? And if you take, then we take the knight. Okay, I'm sure this is the idea. Nice! Nice! Let's go! Let's go! 48. Um, oh, that's very nice. Okay, knight e2 is the move I want to play. Knight e2, king h1. Can we sack on h2? No, because he just plays g3. Okay. Um, here, here. Can we take? Wait, can we go knight e2, king h1? I'm trying to play knight g3. Maybe we do just take here. And then knight g3 is a problem. I'm also considering maybe lifting the rook. Here, here. Take. Knight g3 is a threat. What's the material count? We're even. And now we're winning. Nice! 49! 49! Yeah, we're actually getting like somewhat close to 3,000. Although these puzzles are going to get ridiculously hard soon, I'm sure. Um, uh, do we just exchange and then we have a massive lead in development? I don't know. Um, notice the fact that the king can't move. That's interesting. Does rook takes and then like knight takes? With ideas of like knight g6, pawn g6, and rook h3? Maybe. Rook e5, pawn e5. Knight g5? But the bishop's in the way. The bishop is in the way. 
Um, take stir there. No. Here, here. Knight takes. Rookie eight. We have like knight g6, pawn g6, and like bishop to e7. No. I didn't want to spend years on it because it kind of defeats the purpose if I spend too long. What's the solution? Let's see. Knight takes, pawn takes, rook takes. Ah. So the rook just has no moves. And he can't take because of back rank, mate. Eh, okay, okay. Well, we had it coming. We had it coming. All right. Queen to h4 is the first move I see. What? Isn't this just mate in two? Okay, maybe not. Here, 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 here. There. There. Uh, that doesn't work. Queen h4, king e2, queen f2, king d3. Can we just go bishop to g6? Or maybe knight c5? Pawn takes and then bishop. That looks winning to me. Can we go knight c5? The king has no moves. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, that's 50. Here we have an interesting end game. King g2 is the first move I look at because we're trying to promote, of course. G2, rook f6. Or we could just go like here. Maybe. Okay, maybe king g4 then. Trying to get closer to the pawn. But then just king, eight, king to g8, right? I clearly don't know my rook and pawn end games. This might be obvious. King g4, king g8. That looks drawn. So, okay, king g2 forces the rook to move. Let's see, rook f6. Uh, h7, rook h6. That should be winning because the king is cut off. What is rugby one? Oh, maybe he's trying to check me laterally and then get on to this. Okay, if we go to if we go for h7. If we go for h7, then he just gives us checks. And if we try to come close, he's just gonna go here. And then it's probably a draw. What about rook g7? Well no, that doesn't work either. Because if we try and, like, block with the rook, then he just goes takes, takes, and king g8. And it doesn't matter if our king is close either. Let's say we do something like here, 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 here. And then takes, takes, king g8, king g6, king h8, that's a draw. Because it's a flank pawn. So... H7, check. Where where do we go? I don't I don't know how we defend ourselves. Because if we go close, then he's gonna to come to the um H file. H2, check. Let's just say we do something like this. We can't even promote and then try and do this because the king just goes to G7. Okay, what if we go h7? No. Uh, okay, what was the solution? What was the solution? Solution is king g2, rook b1. Oh! You give the check. And now it doesn't matter how many checks black gives. Because we just run our king towards the rook, and if he goes to h5, we just promote, and then our rook defends. Because 
it's different because the king can't go to g7 because we gave the check when the pawn was on h6. Clearly I struggle with endgames. Clearly I do. Okay, we have one chance left. One chance left. Okay, first move I see is rook to g1. It doesn't work. Okay. Uh, what about rook h2? King h2. Check. That doesn't work, I don't think. Um... <laughs> My opponent's also threatening queen to e5, so we can't move the queen too easily. What is the idea? <sighs> What's the idea? I was looking at queen f3, rook f3, but the knight controls this square, so that's no good. Uh, can we go queen d2, threatening this, and keeping an eye on e5? Queen b2. Okay, what if knight f2? If we go rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, queen here, then I think that's probably a draw. I don't know if we can win though. Queen b2, if rook here, rook here, then we just deliver a check and we should win. Here, knight there. Oh, wait. Rook takes, rook takes. Can we just go here? Because if king here, there, there, there. Nice. He has to give up his queen. Let's go. 2792 puzzle. That was very cool. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a fan of that. Fan of that. Okay. We're black. We are winning. We are up a rook, but we need to not lose the rook. If we go for a move like king to e3, then this is an issue. So we can't do that. Okay, what about king f5? King f5 should be the move, right? No. King f5 isn't the move. Okay, I rushed that. I just thought it was obvious. No, not analysis. I want to go to solution. King e4. What's the difference? No, stop. Stop showing me the solution. Stop it. Oh, okay. Let's let it play out. Let it play out. Okay. Let's go back. What's the difference? If we go king f5, what changes? Is it? G4? Is that the issue? I don't know why that changes anything. Oh, maybe because this isn't threatening mate anymore because the king is G3. Ah, maybe that's the idea. Yeah, that must be the idea. Ah, anyway, very interesting. This video has gone on long enough, though. And, um, you know, 51. Considering 40 was my goal, 51 is not bad. Not bad at all. Just getting below 2800. Uh, and obviously, well, obviously not if you haven't seen the previous video, but we did a lot better than the last time we tried this. So check out the card that's going to be somewhere around me here, which has the other video on my channel where we do a puzzle rush survival. And spoiler alert, it did not go quite as well as this one. So you can feel free to laugh at me when you watch that video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.